Um, so I think my screen is up. Um, yeah, that's correct. Um, so let's share screen. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Um. Hey guys. Uh. Welcome to this session. How's everyone doing? Um. Hope everyone is doing okay. Um. So. Today we'll be talking about something different from a little a little bit different from what we have been discussing. And as always, we're really excited to be putting this out and. Um. Um collecting this kind of data and information about the kind of things that we're interested in um, and all that. So my name is Ikech Kumwatu from 623 Ventures and I'm super excited to be here. Um, and our topic for today is the political landscape of Nigeria um, with reference to the social class, voting systems, elections. Um, I'll take the topic again. Our topic is political landscape of Nigeria social class, voting systems, and elections. So um, just in case you have no idea, um, majority of the things we are trying to do or build or projects we are interested in are in the African, the sub-Saharan region of, of Africa, of the world. Um, so which includes Nigeria predominantly. Um, the Nigerian market is really important. I mean, Africa is the future. So we're just looking at almost every angle um, and giving out information about what to expect, not only just for investors, but also um, normal people who just want to have information or who just um, are doing research or you come across a couple of um, content or videos or whatever um, that can help you understand things better and different regions of the world. So this one um, is particular to the Nigerian space, the African space. And yeah, so we'll be talking about the political landscape of Nigeria, um, social class, with respect to the social class, voting systems, um, elections, um, et cetera. Um, so I believe this is going to be a very much interesting one. So the politics of Nigeria and the people, Nigeria is really, um, Nigeria is a, is a strange place to stay or to visit or if you've ever been to Nigeria or you've ever seen someone or heard things about Nigeria, Nigeria is really a strange place to, to visit um, at any time of the year. I heard a lot of things happen over here. Um, so the politics of Nigeria is not, it's, it's complex. Um, it has a lot of um, issues and all that. So this article examines the political landscape in Africa's most populous and biggest economy, um, Nigeria, an in-depth analysis of policies, the government, um, um, social classes, voting systems, electioneering, um, whatever you, however you think about it in the political space. We're just going to shed a little light on some information or some data available or what it is like um, in the political landscape or in the political space here in Nigeria. So we can broadly deduce that the nation's 12 year old democracy is sophisticating, um, evolving and waxing to maturity. So Nigeria is a democratic state. We would like to believe Nigeria is a democratic state. Um, it wasn't always the same way because um, um, there's a lot as regards her history um, starting from the pre-colonial times to colonialism to um, military rule, the military regime and the coups and, and the um, Nigerian civil war and up until democrat the democratic era, which we are cu um, currently in. So um, there's a lot attached to it, but um, the country has practiced over 12 years of um, democratic rule right now and it's still evolving it's not where it should be and um, it's it's not really at the best point to be very honest with you um, and this is not just to spite um, those in positions of power or anything a lot can be done better that's the honest truth about all this um, excuse me so in 2021 
the challenges and political landscape of the country um, breeds various forms of political um, media suppression, election mishaps, um, corrupt leaders, lack of youth involvement, anarchy, and a dire need for constitutional reform. So, um, so present day, we still have some issues that can be that should have been treated or corrected, or what's the word? Issues that should have been um, resolved already, um, from election to um, corruption. There are lots of corrupt leaders in this part of the world, and it's not only about just corruption. Um, this um, there is also um, a lackadaisical approach towards um, empowering the youth and making them involved in politics. Nigeria has a very young population, one of the youngest on the planet. Um, we have over 60% of the population um, categorized as young people, um, but we still have leaders that are over 80 years, 70 years, people who are trying to get into positions of power, which is wrong, because um, you can't be doing old things in a new dispensation. Things have changed, times have changed, people are, um, you can't be having, you can't pour old, um, old wine into the new sack. Uh, same way you can pour a new wine into an old sack. So it has to be new um, for new. And that's how it's supposed to be. And um, if the country wants to be progressive, um, the youth has to be involved. There are issues of anarchy, killings. There's a lot going on in Nigeria, kidnappings, um, um, Boko Haram, there are lots of things, um, terrorism and all that. So why are we here? Why is the country at this stage? What is um, leading to all this um, mishaps um, election-wise? We can conduct um, a free and fair election. There is media suppression. Um, it gets worse by the day. It feels like the country um, kills its own people by the day. And so um, we're just going to be looking at some certain things, touching some certain topics as regards this. Um, there is also a dire need of constitutional reform. The, the Nigerian constitution has to be reformed. Um, and the people who are in position of power, who are the leaders, are corrupt and they wouldn't want to do something like that. So um, it's really, really a sad thing. But it's, it's also important for us to take note of how um, social media, present day social media, has been, has been helping. Um, um, it's been it's been changing the landscape also, and also we have um, a content, um, a video like this talking about um, social media and Nigerian politics also specifically. But we're just going to shed some light on that also in this session. Um, so transitioning from pre-colonial times to military rule and finally democratic type of governance, Nigeria has a lot to figure out in terms of rule of law free elections, accountability. Our leaders don't want to be held accountable. Um, people who are being elected into positions of power forget that they are being elected into those positions of power to serve people. Rather, they serve the, the, the society. Rather, they go as far as stealing money, um, um, embezzling funds, um, killing people, and using the abuse of power, um, tyranny and the likes. It's, it's, it's happening in broad daylight and a lot of them get away with it because um, they either have the money, they know, they know how to suppress the media or something. They just, there's always, uh, there's no accountability um, for the leaders and people who are in positions of power, who come into um, government with a ruling party, um, they are untouchable um, with the ruling party or rather um, they are untouchable. The, I mean, corruption is everywhere in almost every part of this planet or on the earth or in the globe, but it's so, it's so pronounced here in um, African states. Um, it seems like we've been plagued with this. Um, some people say it's a cause from God, like we have bad, really bad and corrupt leaders. Um, I mean, imagine someone telling you, um, um, a snake swallowed a certain amount, some public funds over 40 something, a lot of money, um, lots of money, millions of dollars, and um, they expect the people to believe that. So, like, 
it's only in Nigeria you hear the red, the weirdest of things happening as regards public funds and um, embezzlement, um, killings, um, tyranny, um, media suppression, um, bad elections, um, people who feel they are above the rule of law. So um, we're just going to be looking at some of these things. There are lots that the country has to figure out. Um, so youth participation in politics prevailed in the pre-independence era. I know I mentioned something about um, the young people being involved in politics. So it's really important because if you want um, a progressive nation, a progressive state, you need to take into cognizance the youths, you need to factor in the youths and, <coughs> sorry about that. And the youth participation in politics um, has always been there. Um, it's always, it's uh, uh, um, sadly to say it's been way better before, unlike now, because people who are in positions of power right now, we are afforded the privilege to participate in politics as youths, and they are not um, extending this privilege to the present, the young ones. So um, um, national heroes and leaders like Dr. Namdi Azikiri, um, Chief Anthony Naharo, Chief Obafemi Wawolowo, um, Yakubu Guwan, Olusha Gunabasanjo, and even um, Muhammad Buhari were very young people when they got into politics and they, they were afforded this privilege and the opportunity to get active. Um, they didn't get any, any um, hostilities as a youth, but they don't want to, most of them want to cling to power even while they're on their um, dying sick beds and don't want to give power, um, to pass power down to the young ones, which is really sad and appalling. Um, as time progressed, the generation after them appeared to be in the front. So this is shedding light on what we said before. Um, the young people, present day young people are not um, being um, given the same um, opportunities and also largely a, um, a large amount of the population are indifferent about politics and they, they you can see some reason as to why they are um, they are the way they are. They are being indifferent or nonchalant or like lackadaisical towards um, politics and some things in the country because the country has taken um, more than it has given. It has inflicted more pain than joy. Um, so a government that does not provide basic amenities for its citizens is one major problem of the Nigerian youths. Things fail to work smoothly for them they resort to social vices and assault the society does not develop. So what this means is if you don't um, cater for the young people or if you don't, Nigeria has, Nigeria is arguably the largest um, black population or the largest black nation on the planet. Um, it's over 200 million people as of the last census, last national population census. So, and these figures are increasing every time and a majority of the people who make up this population are young people, over 60%. And these people do not have jobs, do not have um, opportunities or privileges. The government is not um, taking care of its young people, rather it's even killing the people, um, not providing amenities, basic amenities. Nigeria hasn't been able to solve its power issues up until now, which is really alarming. Um, roads, things as basic as water supply, um, 24 hours for a power supply, um, good roads, internet, communication, and all this seem to be um, rocket science for these people who are in positions of power. They just um, side and um, they just embezzle funds, um, sideline funds, um, um, do whatever they seem they deem fit, um, shut the, the 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 masses up and all that. So. If this continues to happen, um, the youths tend to turn to social vices. So the society is in a decay, it's becoming dilapidated the more. And that's why the political landscape is the way it is right now. Um, how can this problem be fixed or be resolved? Um, there have been recent recent efforts um, to do all this. Um, not recent, not too recent, not too long ago, um, there was a not too young to run act, which was um passed by the um house of assembly and house of representatives and um the, the, the senate also so it reduced the act was to make um to ensure inclusion or participation of the youths 
and the policies of the country. So um, there are some provisions and clauses that are um, included in this act to make sure that the youths and um, there's more inclusion, especially for the young people. And so the, the ages of um, um, political positions and offices were being reduced also. Um, some factors, some figures, amounts, um, the eligibility of people who want to get to these positions um, were being considered and all that. But still, it's still a far cry from what should be done. I mean, it's you're saying um, we can have a president of 40 years um, um, and above, but you don't make efforts into making sure um, you produce someone like that, someone of repute like that. And we still have leaders who are over 75 years. The, the average age is over 75, 80 years. And they still come again for positions of power. People who are in the, um, in the Senate um, for over 15 to 20 years are still running for positions of power, still running for those offices, which they've been holding for a long time and they've not really been beneficial to um, their constituencies or their, their, um, their, the people they represent. So this is really not, it's not really addressing the issue, but it was one of the things that were, that were um, cited to help in resolving the problems. So joining them also, joining the political party in Nigeria will cost almost your arm and your leg. <laughs> Buying the presidential tickets costs as much as 12 to 45 million naira. Thus, the not too young to run act might seem like a light at the end of the tunnel, as only a handful of youths can contest. So this is further explaining um, the flaws of the not, not too young to run act, um, and also the flaws of the democratic and political space also. Um, there's got fatherism and the cost of getting um, some of these tickets, joining political parties, um, becoming active, and you have to you have to wet some palms, you have to pay, people pay um, a lot of money to get these tickets. And it's not affordable for the average Nigerian. Um, it's hard for, you can't, unlike, um, um, unlike some, some developed countries um, in the Western part of the world or some countries in Europe and um, Americas and the likes, um, you can't really, you can't really be a young person and just, um, vie for an office and just come up and vie for an office and have a good chance of getting that position. Um, it's not, it's the, the chances of you getting those kind of positions compared to um, if you are in other parts of the world is really slim. And so only a few amount of young people per se, that's why it seems like the older people are those who are um, being, and this are, are being allowed to vie for these positions of power. And this is because um, they use this to keep in check um, the young people. We're going to be discussing a lot about this as we go on further. Um, so in every corner of the country, some youths are, are used as thugs in politics. Um, it's a thing of, it happens daily. Election periods are um, really scary periods. Um, not only election periods, before election periods, um, um, candidate selection and the likes, every single day, um, the youths are being used as thugs in politics. This does not mean that some youths have not found their way into politics in any form at all. In every color of the country, some youths are used as thugs. Um, the desire to live a life of affluence and to be connected to the national wealth and there's them to politics, we use them to perpetrate um, crimes, especially during the time of elections. Um, so the thing is, um, if you're coming from a background that you don't barely have much, there's it's more of a competitive background. Um, kill or be killed. Um, you, everyone is trying to make a living for themselves. A lot of people are living below a um, dollar um, per day. Um, lots of people in the Nigerian population people earn less than a dollar every day. Um, the minimum wage is so poor. The cost of living is is. It's nothing to write home about this inflation, economic crisis, and all that. Some people tend to um, take the shortcuts, um, and the, it, it puts them in a position where they can become manipulated by um, those who are in position of power and um, to their own favor. Um, so that's why we say something here that um, this shameful behavior makes one wonder are the youths also their own problems? 
Um, so we're looking at nation building and political involvement. The youths are really, it's really important to um, consider this. Uh, the, the people who, who, who have been, I mentioned something, and I mentioned this earlier, leaders who assess the corridors of power at a young and exuberant age seem to have sworn not to extend the same privileges to those that are coming after them. Um, the present, I'll, I'll, I'll take various instances. Um, the leaders of some of the big, the, the two most, or uh, some of the big political parties here in Nigeria are very old people. Um, they, are a far, they are a far cry from 40 years. Some of them are 80 years, um, so five years, um, 70 years and above. Um, and it tends to, it, it makes you think or makes you wonder, um, is there a negligence or are we undermining the environment of our youth? Because these are the people that are going to be here. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. These are the people that are going to be here in the future. Also, if you take, if you if you analyze it properly, you'll see that um, it's also a thing about it's a two it's a two way um, effect. Um, are there really competent people who can lead as young people? Um, what who are those who are that are ready to be um, leaders? Um, are they really different from the old people that are meant to fizzle out? Are meant to give way to the young people? And so these are all questions that are really important, and they are seen every day in the political space, every day in the day in the lives of. Um, an average Nigeria. Um, and the thing about this is every single action by those who are elected or those who elect people into power affects the entire population. It affects everyone. It's not something that um, um, any party should be um, should be exempted from. And this is really important. Um, at least this has been the case for a very long time. Um, up until my generation came. So this present crop of generation, this present crop of people, um, the Gen Zs, millennials, the present crop of the young people right now are doing amazing stuff. Um, they are called the, 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 the Surisuke generation with, um, with some bold steps. Um, the young people right now are people who um, are not scared, unlike before. Um, unlike our parents, um, there were lots of, um, there was a lot of rigid, um, there was a lot of constraints um, as regards mindset. Um, people are more open right now. People are considering a lot of things. People are not scared to say their mind, unlike before. It's no more a thing of respect your elders, irrespective of whatever they say or think, um, if it's right or wrong. I mean, we're not trying to throw away our cultures and our ethics, but um, the current or the present um, group of, or the present generation of young people, the Gen Zs, the millennials, the young people right now in Nigeria are not scared. Um, we've been referred to as the Surusuki generation, which means speak up. It's a slang um, that's very popular with a lot of, a lot of young people. We're going to talk about that also as we proceed. Um, so we're not scared, we're bold, um, we, are, um, we, we face our challenges, we, we are a, young, a generation that is holding um, the leaders account, uh, accountable, um, and this is something that's really important. Um, so Surisuke is a slang very popular amongst the, youth, the youths and younger cats. Um, it's, a, it's actually of Yoruba origin, uh, but it's something that has um, gathered waves and um, has been used by a lot of people. Um, it is likened and often interpreted as a mantra telling people to seek the truth, um, know the facts, and irrespective of what pressure or narrative exists, um, people need to air their opinions and do the right thing. So, so basically it's like speak up, um, um, say the right thing, do the right thing, speak up um, for yourself, stand up for yourself. And a lot of young people um are doing that for themselves here in nigeria as of today why we are particular about the young people is because um if you don't take into cognizance your youth or uh, the young people you wouldn't a nation that neglects its youth is bound to be doomed um to be honest with you because those are the people that ensure the progress of the con of the nation of the country 
and there are those those are people that will be here um when every when the older generation um passes away or leaves um the scene so it's really important for the young people to be um to be to be active and participate properly in things that are politically related um so over the past years um, leaders like the, the um, president, the current president, President Muhammad Buhari, were allowed to get involved, and and this is the painful thing. They were allowed, um, they were afforded the opportunity to be involved and um, air their opinions, bring their opinions to the table during their youthful age. And now it seems like um, they are not affording the same privileges to um, the people behind them, um, and it's something that can not be um taken for granted something that how always has to be said um the current average age of leaders in the country stands at 75 years um the truth is we have grown accustomed to recycling past leaders to rule in a 21st century nigeria um you can't be bringing people who who are not um, um who are from a different time um, this is a different. Um, this is a different world we live in right now. People who are not tech savvy, people who don't understand, and and the thing is, the majority of them are not open to um, collaborating or working with the young people. Um, they don't. They they say this. They say they are open to this, but in their actions, um, you can see um, once they get into political power or once they once they. Um, when it get when when it gets to the time to do the things or to when it gets it gets to the time where you have to actually um, do the work, they don't get involved with the young people. They don't um, put the young people on board, and it says a lot. To be honest, um, you can't be using um, this um, crop of of um, old people who um, have had positions of power. Someone who's in the Senate um, comes. And leaves the Senate and wants to vie for the presidency. And after maybe getting the presidency, he wants to vie for another position as a minister. Um, an ex governor is going to become a, a an ambassador or something like that. And it leaves it leaves a lot to think about. What's why at, in a country of over two hundred million people, there are obviously people who are more competent in these positions. And it's either someone is not doing the right thing, people are not um, getting involved the right way, and uh, or they are not um, being allowed to get involved. And that's what we're trying to discuss here and explain here. So youth representation has a future, and there are some young people who are who are doing commendable work and who are doing admirably, admirably well. Um, and we're mentioning a couple of them here. Um, um, we mentioned two here out of a lot of young people who are trying to change the narrative right now. Um, youth representation has a picture with people like Fela Dutoye, um, who ran for office in the last elections, and also some people who were who were who were, who were, um, who were fortunate enough to get into positions of power. Um, Fela Dutoye ran to ground um, has been on a mission to. Um, and become Nigeria's president. He's a very young person, and he is a young someone who's considered as a youth leader. Um, but um, he he hasn't been able to get um, a position of power um, or get um, the office he seeks. And um, there are others who have been able to be um, become elected into positions of power. An example of she is Shei Makinde of Oyo State, um, and. You can see that these guys, these young people, constantly um, outperform um, a lot of their colleagues. I mean, the good people, um, those who are who really know their onions, who really want to um, help the Nigerian young people, who understand what leadership is about, and um, ruling a country or a nation or a people or even a state is about. Um, um, recently, the governor um, Shei Makinde also um, embarked on. Um, he's been doing phenomenal work. He's been um, really pro technology. He's always it's it tells it shows um, if you check their scorecards with their peers, they they are really really miles ahead of 
and those who are um, older than them because they have a, a fresh perspective they have um, a better perspective of how to handle things in the present day nigeria um, unlike using um using archaic methods and um strategies to run a country they have um 21st century are cutting edge um, strategies and methods they use. Um, so this is these are just wanted to mention them. Um, we can't allow the decay we met to catch up with our kids. So it's really important for the young people to become um, active in politics um, from government to agencies to private organizations. Um, data history shows you that the youth should be at the forefront of nation building and when allowed to do so. Um, we exude unquantifiable innovations and competence. We, we get the work done because um, we need, we are doing this for not just for ourselves, but for the people who um, are coming um, um, after us, which is the young ones. And that's why you see a lot of, a lot of people are more socially active. Um, every Nigerian youth now is, a, is, is, is some, is, is, getting more involved in um, the politics, trying to know how can we um, change the narrative, how can we change everything that's been going on, that's been going wrong in the country. Um, the young people get things done and in time, not because we are fighting not just for our lives only, but for the lives of those who are coming after us. <coughs> Excuse me. As much as it would be mesmerizing to explain over and over again, the countless ways the rulers have contributed to Nigeria being at the state it is. Um, this report will be considered a failure if we do not shed light on the rule. So I mentioned before that um, it's not just about those who are ruling, it's also about those who are being ruled. Um, the problem, there are problems on both sides of the, on both sides of the coin. Um, so um, it's not only just laying blames or pushing blames to, or um finding out trying to um get those who are in positions of power to be held accountable um trying to resolve our rulers the problems with those who um, rule us we should now also take into um cognizance those who are being ruled the general public what is being what is wrong because the general public um eventually people who are um, being ruled those who are uh, the followers eventually um the leaders are being selected from um the, the the general public so um if we have these leaders being selected from this general public what is is there why are, are we still having a repeat of what is going on what is going wrong in the country um i mean it's understandable to 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 say that um, a young, a small amount of people are those who control um, the large, um, the large population here in Nigeria. What I mean by this is, um, it seems like a um, very small amount of people are holding over 200 million people um, poster, um, hostage. And so that, that, that it happens, that, 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 is not, uh, that is not a lie, it's, it's, it's the honest truth. But still, um, it still tells us that the the general public, um, the population, um, the people who are being ruled, there is something they need to do better. Um, it's not only just apportioning blames or trying to see what is wrong with the rulers. We need to see what is or examine what is wrong with those who are being ruled. Also, um, those in power are Nigerians, and we are voted in by Nigerians. They will be replaced by Nigerians who in turn would have to figure out how to do the right thing for their Nigerian brothers and sisters in the society. The rulers and the ruled are both to be held accountable for what happens to the Nigerian state. Um, and this is this is the honest truth, this is solid facts. Um, um, a government is not just made up by the rulers also, it's um, only, it's also made up by, um, it's also it also consists of the ruled or people who are being ruled also, but these rulers have to rule some certain people. Um, so we're going to be looking at the profound non challenged governance. Um, it's a thing 
um, it might sound really abstract at first glance, but it is as real as it gets for the Nigerian people. A lot of people are so nonchalant towards government right now. And like I mentioned before, um, a lot of them have a right to feel the way they do to an extent because um, there's a lot that, that, that has fed this mindset of nonchalance to governments. And the majority of the young people display an alarming attitude of nonchalance towards governance and nation building. Okay, a popular saying that bears, I know if you die for Nigeria, which translates as I can't die for Nigeria, is one slang that resonates with different um, and various circles and ranks of youth and old um, in Nigeria. Um, so a lot of people have the saying that um, it's in Pidgin. Pidgin is a language, um, just it's a language in Nigeria that's used by, um, it's like the unofficial, it's like the unofficial official language of Nigeria. So it's like um, a different type of English. A lot of people understand not only Nigeria, but also other Western African countries. It seems to, um, it wants to sound like, um, like Patois um, or Creole and, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, it has its own pronunciation differences and all that. So um, there's a saying in Pidgin English that goes, I know if it's die for Niger. And this simply means it's translated as I cannot die for Nigeria. And this is the mindset of a lot of people. Um, they've gotten to a point where they are fed up um, on, on, they're not, on, they're on, they're not concerned, unconcerned, um, they're nonchalant, they don't care, they're like a dice. They, they, anything that concerns Nigeria, they um, zoom out, um, they, they don't want to be concerned about it anymore. I mean, there are some people who are still involved in, or who still um, are concerned about the Nigerian state, who still um, are involved in making the country better. A lot of people don't do this. Um, they don't know really want to get into this mind, but some of the activities that go on um, make people are disheartening. They make people um, nonchalant and not they care less about how the country is being run or whatever is happening. Some of them just want to leave the country. So the youths in particular are frustrated at every mention of the government, even in daily conversations. Arguably, it is understandable where the frustration comes from. The majority of people, irrespective of their political party and ideology affiliations, feel disappointed in the state of the country. A lot of people are disappointed in the country and how the country is being run. I mean, it's not rocket science. It can be done. Um, events have shown that this can be done, but people, the right people who just who need to do this are not really, um, they don't want to do it. They, they, uh, they use it as an opportunity to keep, um, they use the poverty as a tool, which we are going to be talking about. Um, the fact that a lot of people are, be, are poor or a lot of people don't have um, opportunities to make um, for themselves or to make it to, to forge ahead in their lives. The, um, a lot of those who are in positions of, um, of power are happy to allow things be the way they are. Um, as far as it's beneficial to them alone. Um, so um, this is really disappointing. Um, the very few who manage to put efforts, the very few young people who manage to put efforts into making things work, um, meet, they meet so much decay in the system when they either get to the positions of power or when they try to get involved in positions of power uh, or in things politically related. And they need to get as much like they, 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 they need to get, they, they get drawn into um, the system doing the same things that those who were there when before them were doing. So they either get corrupted with wrong motives and ideologies, or they try to get their own, they want to hold their own, um, collect their own, um, whatever they want to put, they want to earn. The, the mindset of going into governments is um, a, a, with a lot of, young, um, not only young people, with a lot of African leaders is they feel um, government, um, being in government means you um, have access to and rather it should, be this, it should be the other way and you're meant to give things, you're meant to give service, give your time um, to people 
um, work and do the right thing for the people because democracy is a government by the people for the people. Uh, so um, rather than doing this, they have a different mindset as regards this. And that's why things are um, getting bad. And those who are young or those who, who um, buy for positions of power and manage to get into these positions of power, they meet such kind of mindsets and decay in the system, corruption in the system. Um, others who stick to the right thing, their right morals, um, they lose a lot more than they should. And they often get discouraged by not, not, not only their peers, but also those who are of general um, older generations and the general public. And when they meet all these men, it's just like when you get into um, a system, a corrupt system, and you're, being, you're fighting the system so hard. Um, not everyone has the spirit and the, the determination to stay true to their morals, to stay true to their to their ideologies. Not everyone gets, um, not everyone is incorruptible. Um, but so those who stay true, who stay on course um, to do the right thing, um, they get, they lose a lot of things. Um, um, Doing the right thing in Nigeria it seems like you are um, calling for your own death or calling for um, um, threats to your family, um, threats to those your loved ones, um, losing um, the good things of life, the good privileges attached to life. Um, they are made to believe that, irrespective of their actions, also uh, the nation is at a declining state and nothing can save Nigeria from an inevitable futile end. And this, this is to an extent um we discussed about um the a little bit about the history of the country um in other contents also and you can see um a lot of arguments and positions saying that um the country should split up and history has shown to an extent um so people understand that this is why the things are like the way they are in the in the country um Um, so I will go to the next slide. Um, so um, to further understand this better, you can see that um, we made mention of something here. Every day, approximately over 650,000 Nigerians, young Nigerian people apply for visa processing. Um, people are fed up and leaving the country. Um, immigration and relocation to other countries um this is and this is due to the state of the country so nigeria is using it is losing its young um sharp sharpest minds or young minds and um, innovative people to to a lot of countries um talent coaching is is is, is at a high so um from doctors to lawyers to young lawyers to economists to tech talents nigeria produces some of the top amount of um, tech people, top tech people in the world. Um, Nigeria is slowly losing its young creative minds to other countries. Um, this is because of the non-challenge the government. People are now tired and fed up of what the government is, and what the government is doing, and what they shouldn't be doing, what they should be doing right, and they refuse to do. Um, so organizations like the National Orientation Agency and the Ministry of Internal Affairs are those who are in positions, this kind of organizations, like a, a lot of others also, um, are those who are meant to change the narrative. Um, um, it's not going to solve the entirety of the problem, but it's going to um, show that um, something is being done and putting, and putting into cons um, consideration um, how there is a lack of um, unity and also nonchalance towards the government and the politics and everything concerning Nigeria right now. Um, so organizations like the NOA, National Organization Agency, Ministry of Internal Affairs, Ministry, Ministry of Youth and Sports, lots of federal hospitals, and they need to step up and engage in prudent strategies to resolve the issue of nonchalance. Um, so we're going to be looking at patriotic defenses and blood lines. Um, this is what this means is there are in a nation um, 
in the nation, we're always going to have a group of parties and people who have problems, um, people who different ethnic groups who are going to come up or different regions. Um, it happens everywhere in the world who are going to come up and show their um, their discontent, their their um, bring up their aggrieved issues about how they're being treated as a people in the nation. Um, but um, up until recent times, it's um, the division and the like. The country has become so divided. Divided. Um, we've had. We've never had a divisive um, administration like the recent ones we've had, um, and the recent um, administration uh, um, in position of power right now. So we are going to be looking at why this is the case. Um, Patriot defenses we um, have built up walls. Um, if you're not from this part of this country, you're not. And my brother, and uh, so um, there have been bloodlines as regards to political affiliations and all that. Um, so, what unites us as a nation? Um, this is a this is a question we need to be asking ourselves. Have the lines of nationhood and our core beliefs become so broad? Uh, before Nigeria used to, um, we used to, we heard stories from our parents, um, how the country was. Um, someone who was from the eastern part of Nigeria could. Go to any part of the country and do business. Someone who's from the northern part um, can. The, the, there was a, the, the country was a little bit more united, uh, and we know that change is inevitable. Yeah, um, and with the history the country has had, there have been lots of repeated or uh, repetitive um, um, concerns by different um, parties, different people, different ethnic groups. Nigeria is one of the most diverse nations in the world. Uh, we have a lot of um, ethnic groups and languages um, here uh, in the country. So um, there is bound to be um, um, there's bound to be um, some rifts as regards um, values, disagreements by different parties. Uh, but unlike before, this has become this present times have become so. Um, so it's become unbearable. Um, yeah, at uh, some parties who were making, who were coming, who um didn't have concerns about being a part of the nation, I even calling out to leave um, the country and the country being split up and everything. So uh, coming from such history like ours, one would understand to an extent why things are the way they are. We've had a history of um from pre-colonial times to colonialism to uh, military, uh, military regime and the coups to the Nigerian civil war to the democratic government and the present day and um, rule of law. Um, the, the present day government and administration up until um, the, the, the first um, ever um, events that ever happened, you can see that there is a lot of things, there is a lot of, um, there, have been, there, there are seeds that have been planted um, over the time that seem to um, be terrible nation of the I mean, young Nigeria prides its heritage, prides in its heritage, but isn't entirely loyal to the sovereignty of the Nigerian state. So this is something that's a little bit different from, from other parts of the world. If you meet an American, because he's an American first people, uh, he tells you where he's from in America, but um, in the Nigerian, it's not entirely the same thing with the Nigerian people and the African space. Uh, an Igbo man is first of all an Igbo man before the Nigerian, uh, a Yoruba man, an Hausa man, a German, a Kiriman, a Tif person. So um, it's good to it's uh, it's good to have have. Um, to own your culture and to have it at the center of your heart, but um, it's the it also has there's a side effect to all this because um, with the way the country has been or the way things the country has treated its people, the way the rulers have treated the people, um, a lot of people are, um, are they've lost hope in the Nigerian dream or the Nigerian state. Uh, it's more about the only thing they fall back to. It's more about just their, their, their region or their 
their people or their particular culture. Um, for instance, if a three-year-old in northern, western, or eastern or southern part of the Nigeria of the country places his flag first before the country. Uh, so ideology is not perfect since we have diverse traditions and culture. Uh, we have actually over 200 languages and tribes in our country, thereby giving room for division from ethno religious to social cultural challenges. Quite a number of people they, they see reasons and spread ideologies with their own solid facts as regards why the country Nigeria should not have been created or shouldn't be existing right now. Also, the Nigerian Civil War and the Biafra War left a stigma on the survivors which has been passed down to this day. Um, we're still having um, a conversation about um, the eastern part of the nation leaving uh, the, the Nigerian states. And other parts of the nation are also seeing reasons as to why they should leave. Um, and the after effects psychologically, economically, politically, uh, and otherwise, we are ill-managed and after effects of the Nigerian um, civil war or the Biafra war. Um, and this is the same way a lot of things in this country um, go bad or are not managed properly. Uh, as if parties still hold um, these their beliefs and pass it on to the other generations, um, and the formation of division, hatred, and disunity has become high um, because people are frustrated. It's it's pent in, it's pent up anger right now because. Um, a lot of people want to be want to be lenient with the rulers and the states, the, the, the position we find ourselves in. But then um, the way the country is being run, um, the constant corruption in the country uh, makes a lot of people to lose faith the more. Uh, this is understandable. The state of affairs in the nation, as well as the constant plunging of the nation, and its people into poverty, economic collapse, and moral decay has placed a lot of roots in the Peru, um, in the Peru, with the lack of zeal in upholding the Nigerian dream, which is a dream of service, peace, and prosperity. Uh, this is the roots, um, the way the country is doing, uh, the, the way the country deteriorates further, um, makes people feel um, less good in, um, in the Nigerian dream. Um, so we're going to be looking at impoverishment as a tool. And so, so I mentioned something about impoverishment, um, about the the, um, the politically, um, those in positions of political power, of those who are leaders, of those who have um, some some advantage over other people politically, using um, poverty as a tool. And now we're going to talk about talking about impoverishment as a tool and problem. Um, the sad story, side to the story here is that humans in general have needs and wants and, and want a better life. Hence, if you offer um, a hundred dollars to a kid who barely makes up, makes up to that for, um, for a day, um, and lives in a country where the minimum rate is below twenty dollars, and the, the majority of them will grasp at such offers that their life depends. Just the fact um, some of them would. And when people are pushed to the world, they take on any opportunity they see for themselves because um, they want to just live and get by. And so, this is why a lot of people, with the large population of people who are unemployed, uh, who are looking for new opportunities, and the, the political, those in positions of political power. Um, they take advantage of this and they show peanuts here and there and use those who are disadvantaged to their own favor and to perpetrate bad things and ill activities in society. This sole reason is a valid, is a very valid factor agreeable to millions of Nigerians of different states and backgrounds. A lot of people know this. Um, when elections come on, you see leaders, um, people selling their votes for uh, tiny pieces, um, things as little as 200 naira, which is barely up to barely up to 50 cents, um, or 20 cents is barely, is barely up to a dollar. Um, um, 
then it's barely half a dollar. Um, it does a lot. People who sell their goods for rice, for bags of rice, and these political um, leaders um, come to only come back to their constituents and then they, they, they seek re election and they throw around peanuts and little coins here and there. And um, those who are not politically aware, um, who are not um, who are impoverished, who are, who are disadvantaged, um, take these opportunities. Last week, with both hands, of considering the futuristic damage. Um, so, this tells a lot. And the leaders know this is going to be constantly happening. They constantly should be in this position um, to their own advantage. And that's a sad thing to see. Uh, only youths find themselves in positions where they become lured into problem during electoral processes, um, ballot box, um, snatching, violence, killings. Election period, and it's sad to see that a lot of the trouble going on during electoral processes are carried out by the police, and they're going to bear meeting um, amounts of money, these um, promises of payback uh, once elected um, by these um, office holders or people who are buying into trying to get into this position of power. And this, the funny thing here is. These people who use these stocks, um, majority of their children are not even in Nigeria. Majority of their children are living a good life and um, school in some of the best schools in the world. And this is something that has always been happening. I mean, because the a fact that cannot be heard. Besides, it's something that has always been there. And, and it doesn't seem to be given as any attention unless things are done right. Majority of the upper class and those who the positions of power and whatever part of the nation benefits from uh, political problems and manipulation of the youth. The very recent instance um, um, is the NSAS protest that occurred in October 2020. NSAS protest is a milestone. Something that has never it's, it's a change in the narrative that's not happened in a long time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's a change in the narrative that has not happened in a long time for the Nigerian people. And in Nigeria, in particular, uh, the protest uh, was it initially started as a, a protest against a rogue unit, a bad unit in, in the police force. But then, youths went further to uh, use the opportunity to seek for and uh, reform uh, and hold their leaders accountable, which ended up in a really sad and um, um, it's really sad way that uh, people lost their lives when they were killed. Um, protests last, lasted for a long time. You know, it was something that every every single person um, who watched any TV station locally, internationally, CNN, um, and in the same station in the world, um, uh, whatever we look at the media houses, it was all over the internet, all over the news. Um, so it was a protest that happened, um, and it was it was a way of the Nigerian youth telling the leaders, um, enough is enough, we've had it up until our next, we're not taking anything any further. And it sent a, it sent a resounding message to the government and those who are positions of power that you can't really do anything and get away with it. Uh, the protests and messages spread like wildfire. It started online. Uh, it's been going on for a while, but in October 2020, it peaked uh, because uh, the series of events that made everyone um, frustrated and discontent about it, discontented about it. And people step into the streets to protest and ask for um, and ask for their rights, ask for ask that the government do the right thing also. Um, the relentless really blunt out efforts by the government at all levels. Um, the government obviously did what they do best, which is uh, try to use violence, um, break the spirit of Nigerians, um, cause disunity. Um, they do divide, they, they have a principle of divide to conquer. Um, and 
the NSAS, the NSAS protests um, um, culminated to um, the Lekki, Lekki Tailgate massacre, which, which resulted in the deaths of a lot of young people. Um, I mean, you can see Nigerian government, um, governments and political leaders, um, rather than doing the right thing, um, they would rather do anything than the right thing. Um, they, um, um, some police or some military officials, some soldiers came to the, to the toll gates and started shooting at um, peaceful, harmless protesters. And it was a night that I'll never be forget, the 20th of October 2020. A lot of people lost their lives. Um, it's a sad thing to remember because these events, there was just literally a young group asking for asking not to get killed, and they were being still they were still being killed. Um, it's sad to see. And uh, so um, we witnessed a blatant effort by the Nigerian government at all levels, um, states, federal, local. And we were all trying to disrupt and take the state of young Nigerians who were already nearing their elasticity points. They already they already had it up to here. They were tired, they were just trying to fight for their rights. And it was a harmless protest. The government, um, the government and those who were in the power um, felt um, threatened and then they did what they did best, which is um, use, use force and violence. Um, the corrupt leaders have harnessed this power further by um, avoiding their big events. The majority of them would rather keep funds for road projects, um, housing projects, water supply. The meanest, um, I mean, recently um, the world was hit by the COVID pandemic, and in Nigeria we can see, we could see Nigerian leaders hoarding COVID COVID, um, COVID um, palliatives for their personal reasons. Um, um, palliatives that were being sent and um, relief packages sent to the country. Um, videos surfaced online and offline. Um, warehouses were being ransacked where these COVID palliatives were stored um, years after, months after, um, not given to the people who actually need these palliatives. And this shows this is the highest amount of wickedness. Uh, I mean, you could be, um, this government officials don't really pay for these things. Why are you affording it to for your own personal gains? You probably sell it um, and put it off the market. I mean, it's all over the internet. Um, it's everywhere to see. Um, it should it it put up um, and open the eyes of or enlighten the Nigerian people to see that um, these people who are in position of power care, do not care about um, them at all. And this is really sad. Um, and this is the same thing that happens funds for um, road projects and housing projects, water supply, transportation, employment opportunities, education, health, um, technology, manufacturing, industry. Um, cap um, capital projects, um, money set aside for these um, projects are being used by people who. I police to position the power for their personal gains and they channel them to pay in the use. They would rather pay for talks during elections and to coerce people stealing of electoral materials to keep that position of power rather than doing the right thing, serving the people and seeing the people um, instead of them doing this, making the, the lives of the people better, they prefer to keep them in coverage and see them suffer. So this is really sad. Um, don't get deceived or don't don't believe otherwise because this is the reality here in Nigeria. A lot of people will come out and say this is not true. A um, lot of people have got different bias opinions, but I mean, um, fit will always catch up with everyone, and the truth will always the truth will always come out. So this has always been the case. This has always been how things are doing in the country. Um, the leaders, rather than doing the right thing. Um, and, they, and these people still earn outrageous amounts of money as wages and payments and for being in this position of power. It's the greed and corruption won't let them um, use these projects, use, carry out their due diligence to their people. Um, and it's really sad. Uh, so 
rather than doing um, carrying out these projects, um, they pay for talks during elections, uh, for coercion, stealing of electoral material, which is this, these are daily things, these are always rampant and um, going in Nigerian political space, and bribing or sharing mega sums of money slash food items uh, to young people in a state of uh, support. Like I said, the Nigeria we are living in today is Nigeria um, by that's built by Nigerians and for Nigeria. So we need to understand that um, it's not just the leaders that are fault, also the, the followers or those who are being ruled are also um, at fault. Also, there needs to be a change in mindset, a change in activities for everyone. Those who are doing it and those who are also um, the, the rulers. So, as we are looking at moral realization, the moral dependence of the society is there. The, um, the, the values we used to hold there are not there, are not, um, are not, are not considered um, values anymore. And people, people, <coughs> people want to cut colors to do whatever gets ahead in life. Um, values of character, hard work, and um, um, good behavior, um, they've been exchanged for um, weak um, godfatherism um, and lots of morals and um, decay in the moral system. So moral reorientation of not just the old, but also the young people and the entire population is needed to reduce the mentality of the get rich people. Um, lots of people in Nigeria just want to make money by any means whatsoever, um, and this this leads them into crime. This leads them into being in positions where they can be used as political tools, and this leads them into doing the wrong things. And the society is um, the, the morals in society are going down, further down the drain, and we need moral rehabilitation right now, um, or moral rejuvenation of not just young people but every single person here in Nigeria. Um we're going to be looking at political activism and social media. Um everyone is a is an activist right now in Nigeria from their from their smartphones, they call uh, they call out leaders, bad leaders, and they ask for the right things to be done. Um, so youth in Nigeria have for sign for, for some time phones used to be used on social media tracking the performance of their representatives. Um, social media is the only thing. Nigerians are very progressive people in general. So um, you can see like, um, you can, it's good to, it's, it's possible for you to, to, to assume or say that um, a lot of young people um, use this to, add to, to a good advantage and um, use this positively. Um, we are not scared like before. We are very bold um, to call out our leaders. Um, so stakeholders in the political space um, um, also take advantage of this. Um, the social media is now Twitter, Facebook, um, uh, WhatsApp, and uh, Nigerians are one of the highest users of these social media platforms in Africa and also in the world to an extent. Um, so. Um, it's, it's a lot of people will tell you this um, elections are won online as much as they are won offline also. And it's the same way in Nigeria. Um, it's have a way, it's uh, the present population, those who are being ruled, um, have a way. Use this is their advantage to hold the rulers accountable. Um, you can't just come online and post anything or uh, talk about it, have track records. And people are watching what you are saying, what you're doing, and also the stakeholders, the leaders, and um, those who are positions of power use um, these um, platforms also to spread um, to engage their people, to do the things, to spread um, false propaganda, and to do to send. And they, they, everybody wants to use it to their own advantage, and. It's important for us to understand how this works. Um, social media is good and can be 
and the two for change, just like we saw in the NSAS process that happened here in Nigeria. So, unlike before, you can't throw around falsified information, you can't throw around any data online. People have records, you don't know how to take videos, pictures. Um, the users of these social media platforms use it for record keeping and secure drafts or scorecards. They know who you pay writing and who you don't writing. But the painful thing is um, the leaders have a way of manipulating uh, the narratives um, so, so far. But they are believing this will this wouldn't always this wouldn't continue to occur. Um, there's been constant calling out of leaders and tagging international and local bodies interested um, in the Nigerian space. Um, people use these social media platforms um, to call out leaders' bad leadership. Um, and also highlights people are doing well. Make uh, sure everyone is on their toes as regards doing the right thing. This was never. Um, it was never happened here before. Um, for instance, imagine what Nigeria, and people take this a lot, and it's true. Imagine what Nigeria would have been without um, what, uh, imagine what Nigeria would have been um, without um, this current, the present um, young people who would have gone there because um, the government literally, I'll give you an instance, um, during the NSAS protests. Um, on the day of the negative big killings, um, someone, um, a Nigerian, lots of Nigerian people um, had um, their social media pages um, um, active. Someone actually uh, had a live Instagram feed of the events happening. And alarming as this may sound, the Nigerian government came out to see those people of God, and um, those were, those were falsified tapes. And it seems a lot that if we didn't have this data, this um, this confirmation, this um, evidence of the crimes that have been perpetrated right now in Nigeria, if something is going wrong, if you're being stopped by the police or something is being look at the any part of the world, you notice something wrong, um, online, people are not hesitating, and people are, are active, we use technology to our advantage right now, and that's why, um, um, the young people are um, doing the right things in the country. So, um, it keeps the mind to wonder if, to wonder what, to do, what the state of the country would have been like if um, things were not like this, if technology was not being used right. And this says a lot. Um, it's, it, this explains a lot of things that are going wrong. Um, I mean, if we can expose the little we see, that means a lot is going wrong in the background, the foundation, uh, the background. Uh, so this seems a lot for uh, the landscape here in Nigeria. Um, similarly, outstanding performances and contributions are publicly um, applauded. They are publicized and lauded on Twitter and the likes. Um, for instance, an example is a recent and support Nigeria. Nigerians are people who do well, they need support to, and they are well many people. Um, and this this can be seen in different um, in different times and events. Um, recently, um, 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 was appointed. Um, during this time, she had a lot of uh, um, so she she had um, there's a lot of, a lot of people are uh, as much as we are fast to to applaud to criticize a lot of people we are also we also use the opportunity to applaud a lot of um, women in Nigeria who are doing good work um, and recently she's one of them and the Congozi Kunji Rela. Um, she was recently appointed as the head of the World Trade Organization, and people went on Twitter. And um, ladies um, did the the trend about dressing up like Okonjo Irela, um, because uh, she's someone just like you see in the picture here. She's someone who um, hasn't changed her looks, her beliefs as a core Nigerian. She's a, she's a leader in every a good leader in every ramification. 
um, in every way possible. She has always been an icon of exemplary leadership, having wives serving under different governments. Um, it shows that people who want to do good will eventually do good. And um, Nigerians appreciated um, her, um, her appointment. Nigerians appreciated have been appreciative of our work. So people use social media also to share a good message about um, this kind of people. Um, so this says a lot, to be honest. Um, so the large population of young people in Nigeria are, milk, are milking, um, and is milking this opportunity and making social media a catalyst for the type of change they want and deserve. Um, they use social media to their advantage because it's the only power we have that the government can't literally take away from us. I mean, they can because only recently um, the government placed a ban on Twitter um, after the Elsa's protest. And it shows, it shows that they are scared of anything um, that opposes or threatening to their power. And so um, but a lot of young, young people in Nigeria um, still use um, the platforms, these different platforms, um, but it has shown us that um, we can actually hold these people accountable, these leaders accountable, um, we can actually call them out for their problems, um, um, irrespective of who we are um, and who, irrespective of what position they hold, um, and actually um, make the person, make people do the right thing. During the end such protests, it showed that um, the, the youth coordinated themselves so much, um, provided health services and um, transportation. It was almost like we were running a government of our own, um, um, aside the government. It shows that um, this um, outrageous amount of money that was being, that was being um, um, allocated for projects and they have never been used and being embezzled. Um, this um, the mindset that Nigeria would never work, it shows that um, it's actually something that is a far cry from the reality. And Nigeria, we actually did things for ourselves. It wasn't so expensive to um, put up for um, sick or buy health services, or buy legal services, and transportation, feeding. It shows that we can actually, if the leaders wanted to actually do things right in the country, they would have done it a long time ago. Uh, which also further explains why um, an impoverishment is a tool for a lot of people who are in government. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at some political, the poli um, a little bit details about political parties, elections, and voting systems. Uh, at this point of this article, you might want to throw out any idea you have of what a political party is, because um, the political parties in Europe here in Nigeria is a chaos. Um, it's like they do whatever they want to do, irrespective of um, the the right thing, irrespective of the values. Like people just do whatever they want to do. Um, the country claims to be running um, a partisan or two party system, um, but it's actually a dysfunctional system, um, a dysfunctional multi party system. Um, we have a supposed um, opposition party and main party, but um, people, people, they're still the same corrupt leaders, they're still the same um, underperforming um, um, government, um, government um, office holders, um, they're still the same bad officials, they're still the same um, bad party systems that are still available and that still exclude the young people from positions of power also. Um, there are 18 political parties in Nigeria um, duly registered by the Independent National Electoral Commission, which is um, the body as regards any, the apex body as regards any team election here in Nigeria, the charge of commission um, of conducting elections, commission of results and the likes. Um, um, elections are conducted in the format stipulated by the regulations or timetable by the INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, following the provisions of the Electoral Act. 
Um, these are just for formalities because um, some people will tell you things that the wrong, the wrong, the wrong doers will still, um, will still go away scot free. They will still, they will still, they won't face the the the, the, the fury of the law. Uh, people will still um, steal ballot boxes and um, electoral violence will still will always um, be a part of the Nigerians and Nigeria political space. And so, um, one thing to wonder, um, are these parties, are these, um, are, is everyone involved doing the right thing? What is being, what is not being done correctly? What can be done better? So the electoral process um, starts with voter registration. Uh, we're going to be looking at that. I'm giving you a brief um, run through of what the electoral process is like in Nigeria. Um, voter, voter registration, um, Collection of personal voters card, which is the PVC. Um, there is a notice of election. This is just a brief explanation of how the process goes. Um, the notice of election is not later than 90 days to the election date. Um, then there's collection or collection of nomination forms by political parties that have been properly registered. Um, then political parties conduct and their primaries and selection of their candidates. Um, then the next is the campaign by the political parties. Um, they start um, their campaigns and there's publication of the party flag bearers and candidates. Um, then the next one is the nomination of IMEC election controllers and officials at all levels. Um, then the first of all elections is the presidential Stash national house of assembly elections. Um, this is all stipulated or marked out in um, the electoral plan or the electoral and timetable by INEC uh, and the bodies involved. And the next one is um, the gubernatorial slash states um, house or state house of assembly elections. In the national house of assembly, we have the Senate and the House of Representatives. And then we also have states and houses of assemblies um, here in Nigeria. Um, so uh, after that, we have the collection of election results and presentation of election certificates to elected candidates. Uh, this is after the elections have been conducted. Then there's a collection of results and an announcement of those who won, who won rather, sorry, and presentation of election certificates to those who um, are to be elected into positions of power. And then last but not the least, um, announcement of runoff elections and petition of results. A petition of results is a normal thing here in Nigeria. Um, everybody, it's almost, it's happened, to, there's no election without election petition. Um, everybody, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like the 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 main the main jamboree after the whole election because it's always a funny scene. People claiming people who are obviously corrupt, um, pointing fingers and claiming that others mm -hmm. are corrupt or they shouldn't be elected. Um, this is one of the 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 fun and interesting, really funny part of the Nigerian electoral process. Um, so we go to the next one. So um, the APC is the current ruling party in Nigeria, and the PDP is the um, opposition party. For a while, um, political elections and processes have been between two parties: um, the ruling party and the opposition party. It's almost like a rinse and repeat situation, and people are cross capital in the movement of political candidates. Opposition parties move to other parties seeking interests that align and benefit their political career rather than the nation. Um, um, the political landscape and tone within political parties in Nigeria is a mere case of Lord Fadarism, um, corruption, lack of internal politics for party families, and lots of issues in uh, political parties. People who merit these positions. Either um, they get <clears throat> they either do not get this um, 
it's the issue of power. Uh, you know, we families we have because we don't have the funding, or uh, we are in a position where um, godfathers meet them and tell them before they get into this position, they need to um, uh, sign agreements, agree to do some certain things. A lot of those corruption um, youth are not also being considered. Um, lots of parties, aggrieved parties, are not being considered to do elections. And, and there is no inclusion of even those who are disabled, um, those who are who are not who are who are at the rare end of society spectrum. Um, it's it's really sad to see. And one important question to be answered is whether party selection process in Nigeria are guided by party processes and regulations, or they are simply forms for elite consensual opinion validation. So what this means is what this explains in a nutshell is um, these party selection processes, um, internal party politics, um, the majority of them here in Nigeria are not really they are just, um, they're just, jam they're just a, a, a jamboree. They just events to just to to fulfill all righteousness. Um, they already have people who they selected or who they want to select. It's not a free and fair um, process. Um, it, it's not guided by party policies. Um, it's not guided by um, laws or regulation. It's just um, a team of luck, a team of toss, um, whoever they want, whoever they think stands a good chance, they pick. Um, not someone who is going to actually work for the nation, or someone who who um, who is a bearer of, or who is a representation of the party's core value, core values and ethics um, or ideologies. Um, so this is one of the things that can also be noticed in the. Um, political party landscape here in Nigeria. Um, the absence of internal democracy that characterizes political parties in Nigeria is responsible for women, youth, and marginalized or disabled interests on interest on representation in party leadership and elected positions. Um, so what this means is, like I said before, um, there's no inclusion for um, different um, different different categories of the public. The women are underrepresented. Um, the youths also um, disabled people, marginalized parties, um, and this shows that there is an absence of internal democracy, um, proper internal democracy in political parties here in Nigeria. Political party founders. Uh, or godfathers often have a say in who chooses the party leadership flag, and they're, they're, what 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 um, supports their their decisions most of the times are uh, religious bias, ethnic affiliations, patriarchy, um, um, lots of sentiments, and um, not um, these decisions are not basically the best fit for the people. Um, they, not, they do not really consider the interests of the people, uh, the general public. Um, this is why it's, it further tells in how these leaders uh, are beco become corrupt eventually, how they are nonchalant, how they have to pay um, exuberant, they have to pay outrageous amounts of money to um, their godfathers. They have to um, circulate or spread projects, government projects amongst their relatives of people who are in their political parties, people of the same party, rather than people who are competent to do the work or get the job done. Um, so due to the aberrations that inhibited previous elections, such as balance coupling, uh, vote rigging, destruction of election materials, attack on election officials, hijacking of ballot boxes, violence, influence, Peddling and sub, and there's lots of going on subterfuge of subterfuge of election um, results. There are lots of things that are going wrong um, in the Nigerian electoral processes. Um, Nigeria, it, it shows a lack of 
and credibility. The elections are not free and fair, and the destruction of electoral materials um, and data um, issues. Um, we don't, as of this age, as of this um, 21st century, Nigeria has still not hacked or has not solved the problem of um, online or um, technology enhanced um, voting and collection of results, electoral, electoral processes. And for a country dealing with huge deficiencies and gaps in data assessment, relation, um, underage voting is still happening here in the country. Um, um, the, the, the data for um, voting do not correlate. There is vote rigging, um, stealing of um, ballot boxes, hijacking of ballot boxes, um, violence, killings, attack on um, election officials, coercing them, um, influence peddling, um, lots of things are going on. Um, electoral processes are not credible here in Nigeria. And for a country to live with huge deficiencies and gaps in data assessment, and our voting is eminent. Nigeria barely has any data sufficient enough to make an analysis and conclusive decision. Data is a serious issue here in Nigeria. Uh, the legal age of voting for um, in Nigeria here is 18 years, but um, there are always steady reports of underage voting, um, peddling of votes, and all that by different parties, political parties. Um, during the 2019 election, general elections, there were numerous reports of late arrival of election materials and electoral officials um, caused by poor logistics and planning. Um, compounded by INEX that appear in a completely and hastily true. Some of these people who are electoral officers are not true properly. Uh, they are not, they, it happens in every election period. It happens almost every single time. Um, so we're going to look at the arms of government. Um, the Nigerian politics takes place within a framework of federal, presidential, representative, democratic. Um, government. It's a democratic government, so we have it's a federal kind of state in which executive power is exercised by the government. And we have the federal republic with executive power exercised by the president. The president is the head of state, the head of government, and the head of a multi party system. Um, legislative power is held by the real government and the two chambers of the legislature, um, the House of Representatives. They are meant to hold the legislation, the, um, the, the executive, they are meant to serve as a check on the executive arm of government. It's, it's not how it's, it's not this, it's, it's a far cry from this, um, these people work hand in hand, but um, it's executive arms of government, even in those arms of government to wreak havoc. Um, it's still the same. Um, corrupt leaders you find in legislative power, uh, legislative arms of government that you still find in the, in the executive arm of government. Um, they are the two chambers in the normal king body in Nigeria. They are the, they are the ones who um, create the laws of the land and they are called the National Assembly. We also have the state assemblies who um, delegate, who deliberate also, sorry, who deliberate and and, and pass bills into law in the state level of governance. Um, so judicial power means um, the power to interpret laws and pass judgments according to the law and judicial power and um, powers of the government are vested in the courts, um, the Supreme Courts, and the Court of Appeals, and the High Courts in the different parts of the country. This arm of government is given the responsibility of interpreting the constitution and laws made by the legislative arm of government, irrespective of who is at fault. Um, the executive arm of government has its power vested in the president of the federal states, of the federal level rather, and the state governors on the state level. The executive branch is divided into federal ministries also and power hospitals, um, each headed by a minister appointed by the president. The president must include at least one member from each of the 30 states. His cabinet, I don't think that holds water anymore because um, 
let your president come and do whatever they, they feel is right and like the president one um which secludes or uh, who, who, who shows favorability to some certain parts of uh, the nation um, in comparison to other parts um so the conclusion and summary, Nigerian youths have created, have started creating awareness through social media and encouraging people to get their PVCs in preparation for the upcoming election in 2022. And what has to, has to change, and there's that realization that we can change the narrative and the youth, the youths are now a political, um, a force in the political landscape. Um, if we want to change all the wrongs and the wrongdoings of those who are positions of power. Um, so um, they have now come to realize that the only way to put themselves in the shadows of bad government is to come out in mass to vote for the black leaders. Um, so this was a very long one. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, Nigeria is going through a lot uh, and prayers will get to where we need to be. Um, the country has to do better, get the right people into office who can and resolve problems you can move the nation forward and this you know these white people um have to um, have to be the right the, the, the competent people who are competent and are people who have the people the people's interest the public interest at heart and also um who um who have this the the, the next crop of leaders um should be as diverse as possible and um, women need to get into leadership also um, different parties, the young people need to be a, a center, a, a, a pivot for um, um, national development and growth. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this one. If you, um, if you have any questions, if you have any, 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 any inquiries, if you have also some information that's going to be helpful, you can literally reach us. Um, through our different social media platforms, um, which are our contents. If you see anything that is pleasing to you um, or something that's interesting to you, we want more information. We're always here to reach out. And yeah, um, I hope you have a uh, good time. You had a good time rather than listening to this. Uh, I'll see you soon. Uh, take care of yourself. Peace and love. And that's a wrap.